Cecil was uh, giving auditions for the student ensemble at Antioch College, and that's when I first encountered him. However, I didn't speak to him personally. He asked everyone in the audience who was wanting to or willing to play in the uh, ensemble to come up and play an extemporaneous solo for two minutes. Some people played for five or ten minutes. And uh, I did that uh, audition process with him. And I remember uh, the next day I saw him in the same parking lot where I met Jimmy Lyons because he was staying at the Antioch Inn as well. And he came up to me and he said, well, it was a pleasure hearing you. And he said, I know you know many dark secrets about this music on the trumpet. And then he walked away. And uh, I thought he was like this mysterious guy because he had said that, you know, many dark secrets. And I kept thinking about what was he talking about, you know? But I think what he's talking about was the mythology of the music. And uh, it was encouragement in a, in a sense, you know? Because as I had mentioned earlier, you know, being a professional musician before I studied with Cecil was not the rule. Most of the students there were students and hadn't played professionally or didn't have um, so-called eyes to play professionally. They just wanted to study the music because they were interested in Cecil as a personality and, a, and that course as a course because it was not your average course to take in the college curriculum. Well, um, Jimmy was part of the triumvirate that uh, Cecil had. It was Andrew, Jimmy, and Cecil. And Sam had left the group. And uh, I heard the concert preceding them teaching at Antioch. And that was the reason why I chose to go out to Antioch College to become a student, because I was so overwhelmed with the concert. At, at that time, though, I saw Jimmy play with Cecil, and I did not speak with him. However, when the unit came to uh, Yellow Springs to begin the uh, classes in the black music program that Cecil was given the um, directorship of. Um, Jimmy was one of the three people who was teaching. And uh, I can remember, I guess it was around the second day, uh, they, had, they didn't have their residences yet, and uh, neither did I for that matter. And uh, Jimmy was staying at the Antioch Inn, which is part of the college uh, a place for people to, to stay over, had a little restaurant and uh, part of the cafeteria system that was separate and part of the uh, inn, and they had rooms in the inn, and they stayed there for a couple of months before they were uh, found apartments to live in. And Jimmy was in the parking lot outside the um, Antioch Inn, and he stopped me and said, excuse me, he said, I understand that you had been in Europe. And he said, uh, did you know any of the musicians over there in the scene in Paris? And I said, yeah. I said, I knew practically everyone on the scene. And he said, well, well who did you hang out with? Who did you know? So I mentioned that uh, I hung out with uh, Frank Wright and his group, and that I knew Bobby Few and Alan Silva and uh, Muhammad Ali, Rashid's brother. And uh, when he said, you knew Frank Wright? He got all excited, you know, so he said, you know, Frank played with uh, Cecil. We were on tour together. And then he said, Alan's one of my closest friends. He said, you, you knew Alan? I said, sure, I knew Alan. You know, I told him that we'd actually played together. So uh, it was quite unusual, Jimmy felt, to have a student studying the music that wasn't just a college student, but someone who had played in the field and had already made recordings and was out there among the peers that he had. So he took uh, a kind of a kinship to me right away. And um, the first thing he said was, listen, man, you got to come over and listen to some recordings with me when I get my apartment, because I'd love to have you over for dinner. And uh, he got his apartment maybe a month later. And by that time, he had been helping Cecil and teaching in the program. And... Uh, we became very, very close friends, 